Today we're talking about Canon's dual pixel autofocus and I wanna pass on a few tips and tricks that I use to help maximize it and then we're gonna get into the camera and I'm gonna show you exactly how I set it up. Let's do it. For those of you who do not know who I am, my name is Tony and I'm a filmmaker photographer in the St. Louis area. Welcome all of you new subscribers that have come around in the past few weeks. I'm glad you're here, we're having a good time. Uh, this channel focuses a lot on camera stuff, a whole bunch on the EOS R, and then, uh, you know, I post a couple of my fun little projects. I'm probably doing a couple more of those lately because I've been using this camera a ton. I've been behind the camera a ton and just haven't been able to be in front of the lens. So I'm glad to be back here. We're gonna get some videos out. Uh, exciting week for Canon. July 9th, they just announced their virtual press conference. Uh, make sure to tune in for that to hear about what they're gonna be releasing soon, which is very exciting and very expensive for me, but it is what it is. All right, let's get into autofocus. I'm excited about this because so many people ask me, am I using autofocus for my videos? And when uh, do I not? And when do I do? How do I set it up? We're gonna be talking about all of those kind of things. So to get started, let's talk about when I use autofocus. Always, almost 100% of the time, I use autofocus, one, when I'm doing like vlog style, even like this right now, I'm using autofocus. It's just tracking my eye. I don't have to ever have to worry about it. All I'm doing is just watching for exposure, making sure I'm staying in the frame in the right spot and then working on getting my content out. That's one of the advantages of, of using some of these auto settings is it takes the technology away from it so that you can focus on getting your message out. So when I'm doing vlog style, I'm using autofocus. 100% of the time, I'm using autofocus. The other time when I really like to use autofocus is when I'm flying a camera on a Ronin. And uh, what that does is it just makes it really easy. I don't have to worry about uh, the camera focusing on the background or flipping around. And I'm gonna show you kind of some ways that one, you can maximize your autofocus, but then two, how I use it like on a Ronin. And so uh, we're gonna be talking about that in the video. Now, sometimes when I may not use autofocus, one is if my subject isn't moving and my camera is stationary. So say I'm taking some photos of some product and I've got my camera on a tripod, uh, I'll use some of the focus peaking and things like that that are built into the camera too that are really big uh, helpful features. The other time when I almost always will not is if uh, say the camera's on a monopod and I need to get some really smooth cinematic shots, uh, but I don't have to worry about anything but just exposure. I've got a, a, a sound guy or there's no sound involved or I want a really meticulous kind of shot where I'm racking focus or I've got a really big lens, something like that where it's on a monopod and I'm getting some specific shots that I know exactly what I wanna do. Autofocus will work sometimes, but other times it's just better to have that manual control. And so you need to figure out when should you use autofocus and when should you not. And I think part of that for me comes from using cinema cameras that don't have the developed uh, autofocus that maybe some of these hybrid cameras do. Uh, C100 Mark II, it has dual pixel autofocus, but it's only in the center of the frame. And so I don't really use that a ton uh, unless I'm flying a C100 Mark II on a Ronin. Uh, the C200 actually has a fairly uh, developed uh, dual pixel autofocus, and I will use that uh, sometimes when I'm using interviews because it tracks the face, I don't have to, have to worry about it, but uh, for the most part, if I'm using a cinema camera, uh, I'm, I'm pretty much using manual focus because I am not having to worry about all of the production. I'm typically not worrying about the content because I've got a producer there that's kind of working through that. I don't have to worry about the lighting because we have that all set up. I don't have to worry about the sound because that's going to the sound guy. And so if I'm on a cinema camera, just, it's just easy for me to feel uh, closer uh, in person with the camera than uh, with using autofocus. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be using autofocus. Autofocus on these cameras is incredible, especially for this like small, like YouTube style, running gun, all of those things. Autofocus is, is really a great tool. So let's talk about um, some of the ways that you can set up your thinking that will help maximize your autofocus. And it'll make sense once I start talking about it. So um, 
there's a couple things that I always remember when I'm using autofocus to help the camera succeed the best. Because believe it or not, I mean, it's a camera. It's trying to figure out, it's trying to read your mind. And so if you set up the camera in this way, it will help it understand. The first thing is that you have got to make sure that you're exposing your image properly. Because if it's dark, if the image is dark, the autofocus will not work uh, nearly as well as when it's bright. Same thing with the overexposed. If it's super bright, it can't understand what's happening, and so it's not gonna be able to focus on what you want it to. So make sure that you're properly exposing. And I've noticed if you overexpose slightly, and I'm not talking a bunch, maybe just like half a step on your meter, uh, you know, it will focus better than if it is darker. So avoid really dark footage when you're using autofocus. The other thing to remember is how focusing works. So the smaller your F number, so say it's 1.4, 1.8, that focus plane is really shallow. Now when you move that number up, say you go F4, F6, F7.1, it expands that focusing point. So these two subjects right here will be in focus, but maybe they're just off slightly. And so when you're at F1.4, this little dude is gonna be out of focus, but this one is gonna be in focus. When you're at F, say, F7, they're both gonna be in focus regardless. So if you've noticed, so say it's maybe a dark situation, or maybe your camera's just struggling with the contrast of the people, um, then maybe you just need to bump up that F-stop just a little bit. Move it up to 2.8. Nobody's gonna tell that you're not wide open. It's still gonna be a good shot, opposed to having a blurry one. That leads me to the third thing is contrast. So if everything is all the same kind of color and exposure, the camera's gonna struggle. So maybe what you need to do is you need to put your, your head of your, your subject into a bright area, kind of like what I'm doing right here, opposed to in the dark area. Because what that does is it creates contrast between your subject and the background, helping your camera to focus. And so I'm always thinking through those things when I'm working through autofocus. Uh, think through the contrast that's happening around the subject that you want in focus. Uh, make sure that it's sticking out and looking good, or maybe you need to add a backlight to help that, that subject kind of step out. And one day we'll talk about lighting. Uh, there's a couple really good channels actually that talk about lighting, so I, I don't do it too much, but uh, we'll talk about lighting and how I uh, kind of achieve looks and things like that someday. But right now, just kind of, you can use a light to kind of make that subject pop off of the background and that will help your autofocus. Uh, think through your aperture and th just make sure that exposure is right. Cool? All right, so why don't we take just a minute, I'm gonna flip the camera around and we're gonna walk through some of the ways that I set up my camera and how I use autofocus uh, in my EOS R. Let's go. Okay, well welcome to the back of my camera. As you can see, we're shooting in log, we're shooting 24 frames per second, so that means we're at 1 50th. Uh, I've got the, the lens wide open at 1.8 right now. Shooting on the 35 millimeter f1.8 RF lens, it's a good one. And then 400 is our base ISO. So that's where we're kind of hanging out at. I've actually got a ND filter on the front of this. So if I need to get darker or brighter, we've got those options. So that's kind of the setup with the EOS R. And uh, let's talk through, first of all, let's talk through photo. And I'll talk through the different ways that I will focus. So, um, First of all, you want to set up your camera so that the um, touch and drag autofocus settings are on. And so you can see here, I've got it here, um, and we'll go through those real quick. That's in the second menu, the first page. We've got it enabled. I put it on relative. The difference between absolute and relative is you can kind of play around with it, but I like um, with relative, no matter where the pointer is at, when you drag your thumb, it will move to uh, where it needs to be. Opposed to absolute, it always pulls from the same spot, which I don't really like. So you can play around with that. The other thing that I have set up is I have it on the right. Uh, that way my nose can touch the left side of the screen. I don't ever have to worry about it. It kind of deletes the need for a joystick. I really enjoy this feature. And so uh, make sure to kind of use that. And so what that does is while you're looking through the viewfinder, you can actually take your thumb and just move it around on the screen and it will move your focus point to where it needs to be. And that works with both um, 
Single point and face tracking, it works with all of them. You can move that point around. It makes it very handy. Talk through a couple more of these autofocus set, uh, settings. Eye detection, put it on. That's a good thing to have. And then uh, I always have on continuous autofocus. Um, so yeah, I use servo. The only time I'll ever use one shot is if the camera is stationary. Say like this situation. If the camera is stationary, what it does is it pulls focus and then it stops focusing. But if this subject was moving around like this, it's not gonna focus nearly as, as well. So just make sure to keep on um, on that that servo posed to one shot. So the only time you use one shot is if your subject's not moving and your camera's not moving. Otherwise, you wanna use a uh, servo. Okay, so we've got that kind of set up. Let's look through here if there's anything else that you need to know about. This all looks good. Manual focus peaking, uh, these are really helpful if you're using manual. And uh, those are kind of my settings. I have it on all the time, have it on high, and then I use red because that kind of bounces off. And I can show you what that looks like if you're curious. Um, you just flip off, boom. And you'll see some of these are kind of just uh, kind of glowing red a little bit. And that's what tells you what's in focus. You'll see that other box too. That is a feature that actually came from the the um, the cinema cameras, and it's just a focus peaking help, which I really uh, enjoy. I'm used to it on my cinema cameras too. So um, that is the focus guide. So those settings are on there. I didn't basically change any of these. You can mess with it if you want, but uh, for the most part, everything looks pretty good. So we'll flip on our autofocus again and go back into it. Okay, so let's talk about the focusing modes. If you hit on this button right there, I just opened up Q, that got us into our settings, and uh, here we are. So, I usually just use face tracking and um, single point. That's basically all I use, and I'll tell you when I use both of these. If I am taking photos of somebody um, by themselves, I will use face tracking, and what that does got my daughter here to help, sort of, is if there's one person in the shot, she automatically is detected and it locks onto her face and it grabs her eye. So we're good to go. You can kind of see here. So it automatically, and if I move, uh, if I move her, it just moves right with her. Let's see if I can clear off some of this stuff. There we go. So no matter what happens, she's being tracked. And this works really well with portraits. Now, if you add multiple people into the shot, the camera can get a little confused by who you wanna focus on. So that is when I will switch from face tracking to single point. And what I'll do is uh, I will move my thumb around and put it right where I want it. And that way I can focus on whoever I need. So that's when I use focus or one point. The only other time that I'll do that is if it's something really specific. So say I want to focus on this, this plant right here and I don't want it to move uh, even if I'm moving the camera because uh, say I am moving the camera but I want that, that subject to stay in the exact same spot in the frame while I'm moving the camera, uh, I'll use a single point. Other than that, uh, I'm using face tracking, especially on a gimbal, I'm using face tracking. And what I'm doing is while I'm moving the camera, I'm constantly just tapping focus. So say I want it to be there, say I want it to be there, say I want it to be there. And I'm constantly just kind of making sure that it's tracking what I want it to track. We're a little dark. So I'm just constantly tapping it. Now, once, let's go into video. So say once you have your subject hit and you don't want it to be bouncing around, there's occasionally times when say, it's just not tracking the subject as well as what I want it to. What you can do, and this is kind of a little cheat, is uh, you're tapping on the focus and then all you have to do is hit this button in the bottom left hand corner here and that pauses your focusing, which is a really helpful thing. So now if I move the camera or I move the subject, it goes out of focus and it doesn't follow it, which can be really helpful sometimes. And you can see the tracking is still tracking it, it's just not pulling focus. And so that could be a really useful feature if you're 
focusing, your autofocus is bouncing all over the place. Then when I want it to start tracking again, I just hit it again and boom, there you go. So say you've got somebody sitting and they're, they're moving just a little bit and it's kind of messing up the camera. Maybe it's a dark situation or whatever. What I'll do is I will tap on their face. So say, let's go back to Paisley, my daughter, the swimmer, also known as a picture. So we've got Paisley here. Um, we tap on her face and then what I'll do is I will turn off the tracking because she's not really moving. She's just kind of hanging right there. Maybe she's talking to the camera and uh, we're just kind of doing our thing. And so then once she starts moving again or I move the camera again, I'll turn that auto focus servo back on. So that's a really interesting feature. I encourage you guys to play around with that little button right there. I promise you it will uh, save you a lot of headaches. So like in a, in a dark environment, say I'm filming a wedding, I'll use this all the time. I'll tap the focus and then I'll turn it off. And then I know that I don't have to worry about the focus jittering or anything. So yeah, that's another big feature. All right, so let's turn that off. Other than that, um, you know, you can play around with some of these. They all work pretty well. This kind of grabs it. Let's see if I can get some things off of here. Um, this kind of is just a bigger one that you can kind of move around and it keeps the subject within that area. So if it's moving, I just personally have found the smaller the focus point, the more it understands what I need. And so uh, I just don't really play around with these zones um, that much. I use either face tracking or I use single point and that's it. On a Ronin, I almost always 100% use um, face tracking. Cool, all right. So let's jump back to the main shot. All right, well, hopefully this video on autofocus has been very helpful to you. Uh, you know, it's a very good system and I encourage you to use it as much as you can because it's so good and it looks so cinematic. That's the big difference between some of the other cameras, autofocus systems. They might be really zippy, but uh, Canon's just looks so cinematic. It looks so good and I encourage you, play around with it and the more that you use it, the better you'll get. I promise. So uh, use it, have fun with it, and uh, if you've got questions that maybe we didn't talk about, leave a comment in the section below and we can continue that conversation, maybe even with other people's opinions as well. So make sure to do that. If you haven't already, I would love you to subscribe to this channel talk a lot about Canon stuff, like I said. Uh, I'm gonna be posting some of my own personal kind of adventure videos that I make too, coming up in the next few weeks, which is gonna be kind of fun. I'll show you how I use the EOS R in the real world instead of just making tutorials. So uh, we'll put a couple of those out. And then, uh, you know, I'm probably gonna make a video later this week talking about Canon's press release because it's a big deal. Like this is a, this is a big time for Canon users and it's exciting, I'm glad you guys are here. And I'm gonna talk about, uh, one, if you've already got the EOS R, if you should upgrade to the R5 or R6 or what that looks like. And then I will also talk about if it's a right time for you to purchase an EOS R um, or should you just go ahead and move up to the R5 or R6. So, we're gonna be talking about that. All right, guys, till the next video. We'll see you later. You broke my heart.